Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a project to share with you today. We are in the middle of our bird unit study and we are reading this book called The Spider and the Doves and we got some art inspiration from this book. It's a beautiful book about the Hijra, which is the migration of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his people from Mecca to Medina and it's written in this really beautiful perspective from the doves and the spider and it has these really wonderful watercolors and so I thought it would be perfect for us to do a project inspired by that book. We're going to be using our Stockmar watercolors. These are concentrated watercolors. I also have this really beautiful kind of mini milk caddy that I'm going to use as our watercolor container as well as some paintbrushes. Okay, so first we need to mix up all of these colors first. Now these colors come in basically the primary colors and we are going to be mixing the primaries as well as secondary colors. So I went ahead and I did the yellow and this golden yellow just the way they are, but then I'm going to add the golden yellow with the red and kind of give it a reddish orange hue, which is really beautiful. Then I'm just going to do the red as it is. Now I don't have too much water in these little mini milk jugs, and I am just putting about the tip of the paintbrush worth of paint concentrate into each of these bottles. You can definitely make it lighter, you can definitely make it darker. Uh, so you can just kind of play around with how much intensity you want for these colors. After I'm done mixing them, I am going to test out all the colors and see how they are. They ended up being a little bit on the light side and you can go back and add more paint concentrate or you can allow your paintings to dry and then add a second coat on top of them and that will intensify the colors. Now this paint collection comes with two different kinds of blues so I made two kinds of greens and two kinds of purples. One is more of a plum purple and the other one is more of a true purple. Alright so here's a closer look at those adorable little milk containers and all of our paints. It's super adorable, it's really beautiful and it's pretty functional so I really like it a lot. You can find a link down in the description box of where I found this. Okay, so now I'm just going to give these little paints a test on some watercolor paper, and I like the way that they all turned out, so we're going to move on. I am using some 140 pound Strathmore watercolor paper. It comes in really large sheet sizes, and I do not want to make this project super big, so I'm going to fold it in half and then cut it. My paper trimmer is not large enough to cut that paper as is, so I did need to cut it first before I use my paper trimmer. So I'm not really careful about the sizes that I'm using. It kind of doesn't really matter for this project, but I am going to go ahead and use our painting boards and some artist tape to tape it down onto our painting boards just so that it stays in place and because we are going to be doing a wet on wet watercoloring technique. You can also do this just on a granite countertop or any non-porous surface. Okay, so I'm going to refer back to the book because that's going to be our inspiration for this project. You can see the beautiful watercolors as well as that black silhouette on top. We're going to try to mimic this as best as we can with the supplies that we have on hand. Okay, so I'm going to do basically a night sky in this beautiful kind of yellow to blue look. And I just have my sponge here to wet my paper so that when I add the watercolor to the paper, you can see that it already starts to move on the paper and sort of blend. And it's really going to be pronounced as you add the next layer of color. I'm really going to see that those colors just kind of work together, especially as you just let this dry and let the colors kind of move around. I'm using really thin paintbrushes for this and because it's a small piece of paper it's okay, but in general working with kids I would recommend using a larger paintbrush. I did spray that with some Heidi Swap shimmer and you can't really tell here but it does give a nice little shimmery shine at the end. Okay, so this project is for my 8-year-old daughter and my 12-year-old son, and I have their things set up on either side of me. The table space was a little bit tight, so I went ahead and did my example first and then set them up so that they could work on theirs, seeing mine as well as the book for inspiration. 
And my eight-year-old daughter is just going about this in a very smooth, kind of meditative way. It's really beautiful to watch the children watercolor, especially with something as simple and as beautiful as this project. This is my 12-year-old son finishing up one of my daughters. My daughter did one and a half and my son did one and a half, which is kind of a neat way to do a project where one of them is kind of a group project and then you do your own. He's going to wet his paper as well now. When you are doing a wet on wet watercolor technique, I do recommend using a heavier weight watercolor paper. I find 140 pound watercolor paper to work pretty well. If you do use a lighter weight watercolor paper, I found that sometimes the paper just starts to tear and disintegrate, especially if you go over it multiple times. If you're just going over it once or it's just a dry watercolor, then it's usually not so bad. So this is a really beautiful meditative process, just going from one color to the next in rainbow order. It's really beautiful. It's almost fail safe. You're just not going to have any problems doing something like this. And you're going to love the results. And each one is going to be unique, which is a really beautiful thing about working with art is that even when you're following the same example, each one is going to have its own flavor. I'm using a correction pen here to add the stars and the moon. You could just use some white acrylic paint, but I had this and I thought it would work pretty well. And it does work pretty well, but it's not going to work well to go over the same spot several times. So my children did take a little time to get used to it, but then it worked out well in the end. I also have this handmade paper from Nepal. It is called Lotka paper. It is amazing stuff. I use it all the time in our homeschool, especially when I'm doing book binding. It's a great uh, material to cover books with to make your own. It's very strong and very sturdy, but extremely lightweight. You can see that the wind is even blowing it uh, off our little uh, project here. Okay, so once I, I just kind of cut it down the way I wanted it, I went ahead and I removed the tape off of our project, but I did tape it down so that it would stay put just with a little bit of double-sided tape. I used a glue stick in order to get the paper down where I wanted, and now I'm just using my Sharpie in order to do the detail for the spider web. This actually did take a little while to do, but I'm really, really pleased with the way that it turned out in the end. Not so pleased with my little bird, my doves, and my nest, so I'm going to show you how I rectified that in a minute. I'm just going to trim off those extra pieces, flip it around, and because this paper is super lightweight and super forgiving, I'm just adding a little bit over that spot that I didn't like so that I can draw another nest with two little birds in there which look better but not great but at least you can see that you know sometimes you're not pleased with your work and there's definitely ways that you can fix it. Okay, so moving on to my children now. This actually ended up being a three-day project, in part because we got busy with other things and in part because you need to give time for your watercolor to dry completely before you glue anything else down to it. So once my example was done each step of the way, then my children were able to come in and work on theirs. So now they're removing the tape off of their project so that they can add the black looked up paper and do their stars and the moon. I think that just adding the stars and the moon with this white correction pen really kind of brings this painting to life and I really like the look of it without the black paper but we went ahead and we did mimic the book as best as we can because I did really like that representation. I highly recommend the book. It is a great little story told by the perspective of the animals in the story rather than the people and I love seeing it from that perspective. It's great for art inspiration, for history, and for religion as well. And of course, we're using this for our bird unit, so we're especially interested in the birds in the story. Alright, so my 12 year old son is now working on doing his spider web. It's a little bit challenging getting that shape pretty, look, looking like a spider web, uh, but I think that it looked out, it looked really great in the end. And now he's just going to trim off the excess black and then that's it. We're going to be hanging these up in the schoolroom at the close of this unit. My eight-year-old daughter is working on her. She did quite a bit on her background. I think there's some moons and full moons and maybe some planets in the back. The thing is, is that each child will do this project at their own level, even though I have basically a four-year gap between my children. 
I'm doing one lesson that is suiting both of their needs and they're each getting something out of the lesson, but it's less time on me and they can each get whatever they need to for their grade level. And you can see that their work also represents their age and their ability. All right, so this is what the projects look like in the end. I'm really pleased with the way that they turned out. I'm especially loving the watercolor medium, which we've always done in our homeschool, but it's especially nice to have one that works so well with a lesson. If you'd like to check out some of the other projects in our bird unit study, you can tap on the screen right now. If you want to see more pictures and directions on how we did this project, you can find them on my website, pepperandpine.com. And if you want to see how our homeschool is progressing on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at pepperandpine.